to Sweden, he's going to be the best fucking snowboarder in the world. This is true. What do you have to say about that? This guy is so psyched on life. Yeah. How's it going, Portland? About 13 years ago, in Portland, or Mount Hood, Brian was my coach, so I gotta thank you for a lot of my talent, really. <laughs> uh, and uh, um, yeah, Travis for pulling this together, and Quicksilver for letting us let loose in the mountains of Galena. You! <laughs> and uh, before I pass it on, I'd like to thank uh, Kurt Heine. You guys may know him. I don't know where he is. Uh, he was the guy that pretty much taught me how to snowmobile, brought me into the backcountry, was like, this is how you build a jump. And long story short, thank you for that. And now I'm here. Well, that's just it, right? Like it's a it's a family a family effort. You know, you pass down the knowledge. You go out with people that know more than you, and it's a it's a beautiful cycle of give and take. Um, and look, last but certainly not least, we're really thrilled to have Robin out here. Uh, yeah. You know, it's a probably an easy assumption to look up here and be like, oh, you know, okay, they invited a woman on their team. Like, oh, that's really noble, like, right on. But just, I gotta break it down because it ain't like that. Um, Robin actually, we were talking about this uh, ball face beginning of the last winter, and she's a tail guide up there. Uh, she guides, she actually has uh, more Abbey certs, uh, first responder medical than any of us. And the place which you'll see we ride, it, this is a place that's no joke. You gotta have your shit together. Uh, it's a dangerous place. And um, our, our whole program was reinforced by having her come on with this other guy, John Buffer, who you'll, see, you'll meet. Uh, and so thank you for keeping us safe out there. <laughs> Jessica, who signed me on Roxy 10 years ago, and she's here. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, huge honor to ride with these guys. Um, each of them taught me so much about snowboarding and the mountains and life, and like just I was sponging everything. Brian really kind of taught me how to ride a bit more um, smart, you know, not to just like karate chop your way through everything and like actually do some. You know, think about the long game, so I have you to thank for that. Thank you, Brian. Um, and Austin is my little ray of hope. He's basically, every time I ended up in a bomb hole, which was a lot of times, he'd be like, oh, you were really close, when I really wasn't that close at all. <laughs> and then Travis for setting the bar um, with a, a production of this caliber to invite me on it. This is the standard, you know, this shouldn't be an anomaly for anyone or anything. So, yeah, really proud to be a part of it. Um, and also, uh, it was on my home turf in Canada, which I'm really excited to show you guys. You've probably seen it before, but CMH is a, an incredible place, and they really, really um, did one for us. They really helped us out and let, trusted us with their terrain. They were the, one of the first heli companies um, to do heli skiing. So, um, yeah, I think Travis could maybe expand on CMH a little bit more. Look, it, this, it, the, you know, it took a village, this project, really. We, we rolled in with limited resources. We got this in, initial spark nest egg from Quicksilver that sponsored us uh, and believed in the project. You know, they had no idea th th what we were going to go do. Uh, and CMH for taking a chance. I mean, they literally don't really have film crews come. Um, and so this was totally outside of their world. And we talked them into it. They were into it. And then they doubled down at the end. And we couldn't have done the project without them. So thank you. Uh, back up Chip here because we just want to touch on the production side of it because that's really, I mean, we're standing up here, but it's so, such a bigger part of creating these films. 
Amen. And as a filmmaker, I will just say I was blessed with four amazing characters to make this film. Seriously, you couldn't, you couldn't have asked for a better cast. Look at these guys. Give it up. Give it up for these guys. Because, you know, like Travis said in the beginning, filmmaking for me started when I was a, a little kid in San Diego filming my friends skateboarding and surfing, snowboarding, and uh, just, you know, handy cam, like, let's go make some fun. Uh, you know, we get back, watch it, yeah, oh, oh. Like, it was a really exciting part of my childhood, and this is the first project I've worked on where I felt that same energy, like, like we were just kids in a sandbox, a couple cameras, maybe a helicopter or two, and uh, it, was, it was a really, really fun time. Um, and there was, talk about the team that I had, I had an amazing team that I kind of had to put together very quickly. Uh, to get this thing done. And we have two really incredible people that are uh, a big part of that tonight. Uh, the first person I'm gonna bring out, uh, Dylan Parr, my assistant editor. He was an incredible uh, backbone to this thing. This dude, this dude, 20 hours a day, seven days a week, black coffee, just going through footage. Dylan, thank you. It's, it was, I didn't know Dylan before this summer, met him in Montana. He was just fired up to be a part of it. Thank you, buddy. Second person I want to bring out. So when we uh, thought of the soundtrack for this thing, we were like, of course, we wanted to make it super hard on ourselves and just do an original soundtrack, compose it. And I had met Hannah Holbrook uh, a year ago when we were finishing the fourth phase. Incredible pianist, incredible musician. And I reached out to her, hey, do you wanna do you wanna score this thing? Do you wanna write music? Because we needed to customize the soundtrack for the, the, the feelings that we were trying to share with you guys tonight. We wanted to give it a little style. So I wanna bring out Hannah Holbrook. Super good to have you. Thank you. Uh, Hannah, what was it what was it what was it like? Having a month to write like 14 pieces of music. Well, this has been a dream come true, working with all of you. Film scoring is my ultimate dream, and I play in a band with, excuse me, I play in a band with my sisters, and we actually live in Nashville, Tennessee right now. Um, yeah. So I met Chip and Travis in, in Colorado uh, earlier this year, and I somehow must have told Chip that film scoring was my dream, and he said, well, we could make that happen. So uh, all of September, I got to set that whole month aside and literally every day I was driving into the studio like, I am living my dream right now. Woo! So yeah, I wrote it with uh, Kevin Daly. Um, he's a Grammy Award winning engineer who also lives in Nashville. So each day we were just coming to the studio, both of us composing, both of us playing all the instruments. And um, we wrote about half the score. Uh, there are some songs that you're going to hear from different bands, and uh, especially while these guys are shredding down the mountains. You're going to hear some virtuosic violin from Kishibashi. I can't take credit for that. But I will take credit for the really quirky instrumentals that are in there. We've got some fabulous, whimsical characters in this film, so we had to go kind of a fantastic route with the instrumentation. Um, and it was really fun picking out kind of European folk instruments, having different percussive instruments to emphasize little moments, and just basically trying to tell a story through music that supported this beautiful, whimsical visual story. So that was our goal, and it was a dream doing it. So thank you so much for having me a part of it. Thank you for turning this thing into a fairy tale, because it truly is, this is a, uh, it's a little, it's a little fairy tale that we're going to share with you guys tonight. Yeah. Trav, should we kick this thing off? I just want to say one more thing. Um, you know, Skull Candy, thank you so much for coming and saving our butts at the end, and, and Roxy especially for backing Ro um, Robin for so many years. And thank you for your patience and time. Just understand we're up here just talking away because there's nothing but like a, a wall of gratitude here. And truly, each and every one of you, thank you for coming out. It means the world to us. We're so happy to have the ability to share this with you. I hope to see you in the forest at some point. Um, enjoy the season. Be safe. Yeah.